Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Peer Into the Abyss and Underworld Dreams combo control deck. The two card combo is pretty straightforward. We have Underworld Dreams in play, triple blank enchantment, saying whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals one damage to that player, and then we cast Peer Into the Abyss for seven mana, targeting the opponent. They draw cards equal to half of the number of cards in their library, and lose half of their life, round it up each time, and for each card they draw, because of Underworld Dreams, they'll take one damage, and under most normal circumstances, they will lose the game on the spot. So that's the two card combo, and then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we're kind of a control deck with lots of hand disruption, removal, to make sure we can stay alive long enough. And since we're not a blue deck where we get a bunch of card draw, instead we have to rely on Grim Tutor to help us assemble the various combo pieces. And if we already have the combo in hand, we can use Grim Tutor to search up additional interaction, a three mana sorcery, letting us search our library for any card and put it into our hand and then lose three life. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Agonizing Remorse as a nice hand disruption spell. Let's just take a look at the opponent's hand, and then we can exile a non-land card from their hand or graveyard at the cost of 1 life. So the fact that it exiles makes it very useful against escape as well. Then we've got a 1 of copy of Eliminate and Heartless Act as cheap spot removal spells, and we're playing a split of both spot removal spells, so we have the flexibility of searching them up with the Grim Tutor. And then we also have the full playset of Maze Mind Tome, which has impressed me quite a bit in this deck as a 2-mana artifact that we can tap right away, put a page counter on it and scry 1, so we can improve our draw steps. We can even scry twice if we put a stop on our upkeep, so we can scry the turn we play the tome and then again on our upkeep before taking our draw step, so that definitely increases our chances of drawing a land if we're about to miss a land drop. And then we can also pay 2 mana and put a page counter on the tome and draw a card instead. And then when the fourth counter is placed on the tome, we have to exile it and we gain 4 life. And that life gain is also relevant at keeping us alive, because we do end up taking a bit of damage from our own cards as well, like the Remorse, the Grim Tutor and Murderous Rider. So having a bit of built-in life gain is very useful. And then we have our four copies of Grim Tutor, full playset of Murderous Rider as another nice removal spell, can destroy a creature or planeswalker at the cost of 2 life, and then we get a 2-3 lifelink afterwards. And then the full playset of Underworld Dreams. Then at 4 mana we've got a nice split of two sweeper effects with two copies of Extinction Event and two copies of Ritual of Soot. Again, we have the flexibility of searching them up with Grim Shooters, so having both in deck is pretty important. And then we also have the full playset of Solmus Simulacrum, another new addition from M21. And this one is also very important in the deck, because we do eventually need to get to 7 mana, so being able to ramp in mono black with the Simulacrum, searching up a basic land when it enters the battlefield is very useful, and when it dies it draws a card, so we can chum block with it, protect our life total, and get ahead on cards to help us assemble the combo. And finally, four copies of Peer Into the Abyss. Usually only going to cast this targeting the opponent to combo kill them with Underworld Dreams, but you could also technically cast it targeting yourself just to draw a bunch of cards, maybe if you don't have the Underworld Dreams in play already. And then taking a look at the mana base, we've got the full playset of Castle Lochthwain as well as another card draw engine, and 22 basic swamps, so we do want a decent amount of lands, because we do need to get up to 7, so we don't really want to miss a land drop in this deck. And another nice thing about the deck is that it's very rotation proof. The only cards that will be uh, removed after rotation are the two copies of Ritual of Soot, which are easily replaced with additional copies of Extinction Event, and who knows, we might get another sweeper with the next expansion. So if you're looking for a deck that will stay after rotation, this could be one of them. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Fine opening hands, just missing Underworld Dreams, and a bit of interaction. Turn 1 Hunted Witness, alright, so this could be a good matchup for Extinction Event. Priest, so Sacrifice deck. Do want to scry towards just anything we can proactively play on turn 3. Alright, I'll take a Ritual of Suits. And then I'll just draw with a Tome. Don't have any 1-drops we can draw, so might as well do it in the opponent's turn. So 
So they will be able to sacrifice most of their creatures before the ritual actually resolves. But it still works for me. And Veto, alright, that represents quite a bit of damage. But it will die to the ritual. Do I want to scry? Don't think so. Strider. We can Heartless Act. Fine Scrying for now. Extinction Event. I do need to find my Underworld Dreams here, so I don't think I'm keeping more removal. can just play a Simulacrum. But if I Scry into a... Dreams, then I might play that plus a two mana spell instead. Not extinction events, still bottom. I could take a look with uh, Agonizing Remorse. But I can also Remorse once the Strider is dead, so I can exile it so they don't get to escape. So for now we'll just play Simulacrum. That will shuffle those Extinction events back into my uh, deck here. Bastion. Those represent quite a bit of damage. Alright, I guess we'll Heartless Act Strider. I can attack first. Bowen probably takes it, so I'm better off keeping the Simulacrum back to block the 1-1. One -one. Bowen's gonna sag the Bastion token first. Exile the Strider. And then I'm kind of down to just play Murder Strider as a 2-3 lifelink. I could get punished if they kept a veto on top with all those food tokens. Could represent quite a bit of damage, but I would like to gain some life back. And I could always decide to cast Spear into the Abyss, targeting myself here. They can chum block the rider and sack it to the oven so I don't gain a two life. Keep Simulacrum back to block. So that's gonna drain me for three. Luckily they can't use castle at least. Alright, I think uh, it's time to peer targeting myself here. Seems better than just activating castle and it costs me about the same amount of life. Alright, so there's a peer and dreams, so we do have the combo, although we won't be able to assemble it next turn. And then I can discard a bunch of lands. Don't need remorse anymore. Tome's gonna be too slow. 
I guess I could keep one Simulacrum and play it alongside Dreams. Let's see, how many Swamps do I have left? Don't need both Dreams. That seems like a fine hand. Midnight Reaper, okay. So again, they can sacrifice a Reaper to prevent me gaining two, or I can kill it with the Eliminates to make sure I gain two, which seems worth it. And then I can play Dreams. If I exile with Extinction Event, we also lose a Murder Strider. Alright, so next turn we have the kill. Let's see if they can piece together for damage. Scorpions 3, so they need something in addition. Strider represents 2 damage. And a land, so I think we got there. Although I guess they can cast something at instant speed for 3 mana in response to all the triggers, but I don't think there's anything that uh, they can do. And our point explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. The second peer not super useful, but Grim Tutor can eventually get Dreams, and we've got Simulacrum to ramp into our 7 mana sorcery, so it's not too bad. Although for up against Monoret, this is probably gonna hurt. Alright, we drew the Dreams, so now Grim Shooter might be able to get a Sweeper instead. I think I get Extinction Event instead of Ritual of Suits. They seem to be on the Cavalcade deck. Don't expect them to play Spitfire next turn after we cast Grim Shooter. And I would rather not give them the 1 1 token. Line of the stage, finds two lands. Name odd. Next turn we can play a simulacrum. Omen puts us to nine. Arcanists. And another initiate. So ideally we find some other cheap spell we can play alongside Dreams next turn. And then peer into the abyss on the following turn. Reunion discarding two lands, okay. And a Chandra. I guess I'll kill the initiates. Alright. Well, gotta hope for the best here. Technically not dead on boards. 
cavalcade will do it, however. GG's. A turn away from the kill, drawing the three peer into the abyss didn't help. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And we've got a pretty nice hand. Turn to Tomb. Bit of interaction with Extinction Event, Simulacrum to ramp into Peer. Doesn't seem like a matchup where I need Heartless Act. I will probably just take my draw steps since we have land drops aplenty and I can just draw with Tome instead. No reason to draw main phase since we don't have any one drops. If this is an Arclight Phoenix deck, Extinction Event can exile it for good at least. Stormwing Entity instead. Tutor can find dreams. Yeah, we'll just extinction event here, get rid of the entity. So, name odd. Don't need another Grim Tutor. I'm fine scrying again. We've got all the cards we need, just need some lands. Alright. So this turn I could Simulacrum, and then next turn I could Grim Tutor plus play the Dreams and then peer on the following turn. Since it got exiled by the dragon fire, we don't draw the card, but that's okay. Don't expect my opponent to be playing counter spells, so I'm not gonna play around them. Could also just get another sweeper here, but at 21, I think we can just go for the kill. Brazen Borward to bounce it. So I might need to remorse to make sure they don't have another Brazen Borward to bounce it in response to me going for the Peer into the Abyss, since that would be unfortunate. A lofty Denial. Well, I guess we're taking that. And I don't think there's a need to Grim Tutor. And then unless they draw another Lofty Denial or Brazen Borrower, we should be able to kill them here. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable opening hand. Turn to Tome helps quite a bit with uh, hitting our land drops. And then Tudor can find the combo pieces, although casting both of them is definitely gonna hurt.
burglar rats. I guess I can get rid of one shooter here. Get to him in play, starts crying to hit our line drops. If we're playing against a discard heavy deck, we want to make sure we don't end up with a bunch of cards stuck in hands without uh, hitting our land drops. Fenlurker. I could remorse them next turn. Not sure how important uh, Murder Strider is. Maybe keeping Peer into the Abyss in hands for all these turns is a bit ambitious, so I might as well get rid of it now. Cry again on upkeep. Need a land here. It's not a land. Let's take Liliana. I was bored anyway. So just playing this as a 2-3 lifeling doesn't really work against Eliminate. So I guess I'll tutor for Dreams, which is a cheaper of the two combo pieces we can get in play. Could also tutor for Land, which might not be crazy. Just get a Castle here. Play Simulacrum. And then I still have the option of Scrying with Tome. I'll draw before scrying here, since I might end up drawing instead. Archfiend's Vessel makes sense. So I don't want to kill that, because it turns into a 5-5. Five five. Just untap. Yeah, we'll draw with the Tome here. There's Pierce, so now we just need Dreams and we're good. Could just play a 2-3 lifelink and make them eliminate it. Or I can keep up Heartless Act to maybe kill the District if that attacks. Probably not gonna activate Castle with uh, 5 cards in hand. Take one. Brings back the Fan Lurker. And uh, I guess I can exile one Ritual and cast the other one. Opponent can activate their castle. Could now also Remorse and potentially cast my Murder Strider, taking away the Eliminates. I do want to check for another Call of the Death Dweller before I Ritual of Suits. Alright, that's good. And now I can Ritual, leave them with a Spot Removal spell and then a few extra cards after they use their castle. 
Uh, so we're in a reasonable spot, although the mobilized district can chip in. Although if they use district, they might not be able to castle. Fenlurker, I think I just discard Rider since I still have the Eliminate in hand. So it's just a more expensive removal spell that costs me two life. And then now I can Heartless Act plus Activate Castle. Villa tries to sacrifice it, sure. Steward could be annoying. And I guess I'm just kind of dead here. If I activate castle, I'm dead to the castle. If I take three, I'm dead. It's too bad. Yeah, we definitely got close here. Did we discard dreams at some point? We didn't, so we never drew one. Did get rid of that uh, green shooter at the start, but I don't think we would have had the time to really cast it. So my hope is that the use is steward before attacking for some reason, so I can activate castle and find removal. Let's see what we would have drawn. Extinction events would have been reasonable here, although it doesn't get rid of the Fenlurker. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Reasonable hand. We'll need to draw a land or two to get to four for Simulacrum to get the ball rolling, but we do have a lot of interaction for creatures and a bit of hand disruption. And we've got both combo pieces in hand. Could be facing the adventure deck or a green stompy deck. So the sweepers should be good. Probably take another beasts. Let's tome to make sure we find land for for Ritual of Soot, otherwise we're just going to be dead. Growth Chamber Guardian does give them a source of additional creatures at least. So I expect them to adapt instead of doing anything else. Alright, we're down to seven. If they cast Overcome, I guess they wouldn't have had close to lethal because Lovesirk Beast can't attack if the 1-1 turns into a 3-3. That's the other card that's somehow hidden again. Seems to be a visual bug recently. Well, they did walk right into my sweeper here. Unless they have the uh, two mana instant to make everything indestructible. Shifting Ceratops with hastes. All right, we're at two. And then I can Extinction Event to exile it. Keep 
people land on top. So they're still stuck with their overrun in hand. I'll keep a land. So now I can gain four life at instant speed. So I'm not dead to another Ceratops. And uh, might as well play the Dreams and then if we draw lands we can just kill them next turn. That's fine. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand is all the combo pieces, just need some lands. If we find a third land, I can Grim Tutor for land 4 as well if needed. I'll try it. The knight can be eliminated. Blood Burglar, alright. Opponent on a vampire deck, it looks like. Could have also used Grim Tutor to search up Solemn Simulacrum, which would have been a fine turn for play. But now we can just Ritual of Suits. And then uh, Grim Shooter next turn, maybe for Solemn. Ooh, Rankle. Rankle's annoying. So I'm gonna have to discard a card. Really wanna keep. Land so I can Grim Tutor get my Heartless Act and kill Rankle, but then I have to discard Peer. So maybe I have to risk it and get rid of Swamp anyway. Not a Grim Tutor. So do I Grim Tutor for Castle? I think so. Or I can get Solemn. But it doesn't really block Rankle here. And I think I'll have to get rid of Peer into the Abyss here. It's just going to be too difficult to keep the combo in hand. At least Grim Tutor can get rid of Rankle. And we'll get Heartless Acts, but we can wait until their combo step, so we avoid them playing a second Rankle. If they can gain three life, we're also in trouble. Two, three murders, Rider. I think I just play my own instead of trying to kill it. If 
very happy to gain two. If I were you, I'd just surrender. Yeah, that attack with the murder shatter didn't make a ton of sense. Let's see, if I play Dreams, I can't activate Castle. I think activating Castle is a priority. And then I should stay back since I'm gaining two with taking four. There we go. Sweet. So yeah, we got a nice variety of matchups today. The deck isn't the best deck in standard, but it can definitely win some games. And as I've said in the introduction, it is rotation proof, so it might be one of the better decks once rotation happens, as it's already an established archetype, and who knows, it might pick up some new toys in future expansions as well. Also a deck I think that can uh, translate pretty well into best of three. You can add cards like Duress in the sideboard for control and combo matchups, you can add Sorcerer Spyglass to shut down Planeswalkers, more removal and sweepers for creature matchups. So overall I think it's a pretty fun and versatile archetype even going into best of three. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.